All right, we're here at my urban worm bag that I keep outdoors. And when we left it last, it was up to about six and a half inches from the top. And now we're at about seven and a half inches. So last time we talked about listening to your worm bin. And one of the ways I do that is by one, leaving some temperature sensors in here. So I've got three of them. One is deep down. And right now that is at 87 degrees Fahrenheit. This one on top is at 79.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And the one down below here is at 70. 5.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when I come in here throughout the week, I just lift the lid and I kind of observe the top. And one of the things I've noticed is that it's staying more moist up here. And I happen to notice a little bit more mites on the top. One of the things that can be telling me is that I might be overfeeding. So two times before this, we fed a pretty big feeding. The worms ate it all, so I gave them a really big feeding. So we'll see if I overfed. Now these water bottles I put in here frozen and they kind of thaw out. So when it gets really hot here in Florida, I can kind of maintain the temperature temperature within this bin, but I have noticed that it is getting better and better at maintaining a good temperature. I think because the volume is getting so high. The other thing I noticed is that the worms like to come around here when it thaws out and has all this condensation. So the worms are not worried about coming to the surface at all. So it looks like they've been kind of chowing through this newspaper and that's good. And let's just pull this off and then we're going to dig in. So just by looking at the surface, I'm pretty happy with the moisture level. And I'm just seeing just a couple pockets of dryness right on the top. But as soon as I go down just a little bit, it is really, really damp. So that's good. And I didn't have any leakage out of the bottom from liquids. So I think this bin is doing a great job with holding its moisture. Now, like I said, this bin has been telling us that we can feed a lot more. So I gave them a huge feeding last time. It consisted of lots of lettuce stalks, some grapes, some tangerine peels, several bananas, both apple and pear cores a big mango seed and peels, and a little bit of Irish soda bread along with two big pieces of pumpkin. So we're gonna go down just to this top surface level and see if we can see any of that food. And right now, what I'm seeing is lots of great red wigglers in there. Let's keep going down. And here's a mango seed. So you can see, I'm gonna pull some of this shredded cardboard off it and you'll see the worms absolutely love to go after it. And they get in between these fibers and just kind of strip the mango seed clean. Let's come over here. I know we had a pumpkin piece right here, but I'm really not seeing anything. Let me see what this is. This looks like a little bit of food maybe. And I can see some mites right there. So in little small clusters, we're getting some more mites. And I'm not sure what this is, but obviously a little piece of food left over that everybody in the bin is kind of enjoying. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a piece of tomato, I think, just because of this waxy paper right there. Let's keep going over here. These right here are just cardboard tubes, and I just threw them in. They get really moist, and then the worms kind of take, take them apart, as do the mites. And then over here, yeah, this is great. I mean, the worms, I think, really have taken apart the feeding. This is a grape stem. This is real woody, so it's going to take a while. And sometimes I see worms all tangled up in between there. So it has been 15 days since we were in here. And it's been 87 days since we started this urban worm bag. And again, I think this is just some banana stalk or maybe even some banana leaf. No, I think it's banana peel. I don't think I put any banana leaf in here. All right, over here. Again, wow. I can't believe they just went through everything. This is nuts. I brought out a lot of food thinking, you know what, maybe I'm not going to use it all. But just from what I'm seeing right here, I think we're going to be able to do that. This is excellent. I'm just going to take some time to rip up some of the cardboard in here, and then we will be back to set up our next feeding. Here's a little bit bigger piece of food. I'm not sure what it is, but it's extremely mushy. And we're just going to kind of mush it up and put it right back in. Oh, right there, right there is a little baby worm. I bet that worm right there is probably about a week old. Not quite newborn right out of a cocoon, but it's growing. There's a little worm cluster right there. I love the colors of them. Look at that deep, deep purple on this one right here by my thumb. And then some brighter colors right there and another baby. Wow, so after 15 days, this bin is doing fantastic. Now I've got some unique bedding that I'm gonna put on here and I think I'm gonna put that right on top and then we'll put down our food and then put even more bedding down. So I don't know if you've seen these in your packaging before. I have put them in other bins, but I kinda take this paper off right here, do it on both sides. And then kind of what's left is this structure here, which can go flat like that. And I suppose you can 
put it through your shredder, but I'm just gonna kind of lay it down right here. And I've got a couple others that we'll just put down right there like that. And maybe that'll help to aerate the bin as well. The other thing I'm seeing in packaging is more of this kind of uh, egg cart material. So what I did is I had a couple of these and I tore one up. So let's go ahead and put that in with some of these cardboard tubes as well. And then let's just kind of strategically place it all around because the food is going to go right on top. And this is going to lift the volume of this quite a bit at first. And then it will shrink down as everything gets wet and the worms start breaking everything down. One of the first things I wanted to try was making a burrito out of the food scraps. So I think we'll take some fast food, maybe a little bit of slow food, banana peel there, and some absolute favorites for dessert. And then we'll just roll this up. I've seen a couple other worm channels do this, and I had done this before, and I'd really love to, to see what they do with it. They eat through the paper, and then they get to the food, but we'll just put it right there for them. And then let's just start piling in the food. We've got some sweet potato and regular potato food scraps. Now, carbs can kind of heat up a bin, so you just want to be careful not to put them all in one place. We'll give them some more of this lettuce but we'll put it all around. And some of these food scraps come from my mom's house. She goes ahead and gives me, saves hers up and gives them to me. And this was a baked potato that we'll put right there. And more food. So all the food that I give them, I put in the freezer. And what that does is it helps to kind of break the plant material down at a cellular level. Water expands as it freezes. So it kind of destroys the cell walls. And then as this thaws, it kind of turns to mush. And what I did was just kind of set this out for about 20 minutes to kind of let it get that really sharp freeze off of it. But I get a lot of great questions about chopping or blending your food. And that is all great techniques to use in your worm bin. In fact, there's a guy, Dirty Joe, and he has a worm farm where he just exclusively bent, blends his food and it is hilarious. It, it's just a fun channel to watch and he has a lot of fun doing it and he blends all kinds of stuff and puts them right in his worm bin. So again, use what works best for you. I'm starting to get more worm bins and having a lot more worms. So this is just easier and more efficient for me and the worms absolutely enjoy it. Next, we're gonna put in some of this bigger stuff. This is a mango that my mom actually cut slices into before she froze it. So I appreciate that. And it looks like a banana stuck to it. Got another banana peel we'll put over there. This is an avocado. It's got an entry hole. Oh, a big entry hole. So that'll be good there. Another banana peel, and we've got some apple and pear cores. And then finally, I think I'll try and put a little bit more of this potato and sweet potato peels. And I think there's some other veggies in there like carrots and peppers as well. So let's kind of spread this out and try and make sure that we don't put any pockets that are gonna get fermented. If you pile up food in one area, sometimes that can happen. I'm just gonna kind of squeeze the mango. Oh, that really made a mess. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's do some more of this. And then a little bit over here. And then, yeah, this is great. That sticker, let me see if I can get it off. Nope, that will come off as the worms eat around it. So, wow, what a incredible feeding. I really didn't think that they were gonna get through that last feeding. So, like I said, I'm listening to them and they're telling me, feed me, feed me. So here we go. Let's go ahead and bury this in all kinds of good bedding form. But before we do any kind of bedding on top, we're gonna to put down some worm chow. Thank you, executive producer, for reminding me. And I just kind of uh, shredded this up. It's got some oats, it's got some coconut flour, coconut sugar, and some flaxseed in it. And all that stuff is just expired stuff from my pantry. No real rhyme or reason. I just try and put stuff in there that doesn't have salt, but it's all kind of dry food. And I don't put a whole lot. Again, most of their food they're getting is from the bedding and then from the food scraps that I give them. And this is just some coffee and tea grounds that I put in here. I set it in this container as we use it and it kind of gets moldy. You can see it's a little bit lighter than a typical coffee ground. And that just adds to the microbiota of the bin. And then finally, we're just gonna add some grit, which for us is pulverized eggshells. I just collect my eggshells, give them a quick rinse. I don't scrub them or anything like that, let them dry. And then I grind them up in my magic bullet blender. And if you're looking for any kind of worm equipment, I've got affiliate links in the pinned comment in the description. I've got all my bins, magic bullet blender, the temperature sensors, that kind of thing. If you're looking to see what kind of prices are out there for some of the equipment that I use. 
All right, so now we're ready for the bedding, and I got a little bit of a sigh from the executive producer because that was a lot of food, and she always kind of tries to help me understand how much food I'm putting in. So by the sigh, I'm thinking she thinks I put too much. And here is the shredded cardboard I use. Now, this stuff is great. I've got a 12-sheet cross-cut micro shredder. So the 12-sheet nature of it, I think, is what makes it so you can shred this cardboard real well. And the micro cut is these really small pieces that you see me use in my worm bin. So... If you're looking for a great shredder for creating bedding for your worms, a 12-sheet micro cross-cut shredder is what you want to go for. And I've got some of those in my Amazon affiliate links as well. Boop. There we go. All right, this is great. We've got a lot of bedding, but we're going to go even further. Can you tell I'm getting excited about getting this bin to the top? I'm really putting in a lot of bedding and a lot of food. You really can't put in too much bedding in a worm bin. In fact, that helps moderate some of the issues that you might have if you have too many critters like mites or potworms, that kind of thing. Putting in more bedding will help as well as drying it out. But when in doubt, go ahead and add more bedding. So this is looking awesome. Let's put all the stuff that we put on top on. So in goes our newspaper, and that was our eighth feedings. If you're wondering how long this bin has been going, like I said, 87 days and seven feedings. And then finally, we'll put our plastic, which is looking pretty inadequate based on the size as we go up in volume in this bin. And then finally, we'll add our temperature sensor. So I hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.